When you set boundaries, if you set boundaries with someone else, can you feel their disappointment and the tension if they don't agree or like what you are doing or saying? Do you find it hard to maintain being in your own frame when other people have an expectation of you? Do you find yourself morphing to other people as a response that is maybe even subconscious in order to feel safe in order to feel enough. Well, if so, then this is the video that will change your life from this point moving forward in many different ways because once you learn what I'm sharing with you in this video, you will notice that literally you show up differently in the world. There's a new glow about you. There's a new center of gravity that you have. You'll notice when you walk into a room, you carry yourself differently because there is less tuning energetically to everyone else, which ironically enough is one of the biggest keys to you having magnetic energy. It's actually pulling your energy back inside of your own body. And funny enough, when you're in your own frame, when you're in your own body and you're not tuning outside, your energy is not being sporadically dispersed. I remember when I learned this technique, I'm gonna share it with you in this video, but I learned this technique that has to do with feeling inside my body when I did it. And what I would do is I'd go out in public and I would, instead of wanting to have to say hi to people and having to engage, I would feel the separation between me and other people, between me and the walls. I was in like a Whole Foods or something. And it was crazy the way that the energy was back inside of my body. It was crazy the way people would respond differently. Because think about it, you have an energy inside of your body. And when you think of other people, when you think of other things, when you want something from someone else, subconsciously many empaths want to feel safe. They want approval and the validation of their environment so that they can relax. And that energy goes out and it literally feels like it is a taking energy. But when you bring the energy back, it changes absolutely everything. This video is also going to be sharing with you my journey of going from having that of more of an empathic feeling of feeling like I was, uh, my center of gravity would be moved depending on who I was around to feeling and being in a solid frame of reality. Having a solid frame of reality allows you to feel safe inside of your own body. Having a solid frame of reality allows you to create gravity when you're around other people to where things synchronicities and people are attracted to you. Having a solid frame also allows you to repel away from you the people that no longer resonate with the you that is the authentic you. And that is a good thing. A lot of times people that are empaths, if you want to know what an empath is, an empath is someone that can feel other people's energy as a survival mechanism from childhood where something didn't feel safe and the decision was made that I am going to tune my energy to my environment and expand my energetic field to include that of mom and dad, of my siblings. Maybe some of you were like me, I was kind of, I was the oldest. I'm the oldest and I was kind of like the peacekeeper in my family because there was a lot of kids and I was always trying to make sure everyone's getting along. But so morph myself to get everyone to get along. That's a very common trait that can happen. But nonetheless, when it comes to being an empath, I'm gonna share with you the five things that I did that completely transformed my life, that allowed me to have this solid frame, that allowed me to let go of needing to tune to everyone else and not able to say no. And first off, I'll start with a story with this. Let me share with you how bad it got with being an empath back like three or four years ago. Now it all started when a moment where I realized let me just kind of paint the picture for you. I was starting to get more success with my business and this is a good friend of mine, so this isn't something I'm like talking smack about or this person did anything wrong because they didn't actually, but it was my own stuff of being an empath where I couldn't say no to something that resulted in a very powerful experience of me realizing, wow, I need to fix this. And that was that about three years ago, I had a friend whose birthday it was and she had a whole bunch of friends, like 15 friends invited to this cabin in Colorado. And it was actually a really nice house in Colorado. It was in Telluride, it was beautiful. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And when she invited everybody, we had this, uh, I was in Vegas at the time and I had a photo shoot with a, like a celebrity photographer as my brand was starting to grow that I was supposed to make that I had to cancel because I couldn't do, like I had to move it because it was my friend's birthday and I couldn't say no to my friend's birthday because I identify as being a good friend and I didn't want her to feel the tension of me not able to come. So what I did is I canceled and moved this photography session which meant that I had to move it to a very inconvenient date and this was right before I was going to Costa Rica 
which I do these, these, you know, I go to Costa Rica a few times a year for a retreat. And I was moving all this stuff around and it was inconvenient, but I was like, I have to do it because my, it's my friend's birthday and I can't feel the tension if she's disappointed. And I was living, I had a house in uh, Sedona and a house in uh, Vegas. Now, in order for me to drive 10 hours, because to, to fly, I had to fly into Denver and then drive five hours. And I didn't want to do that. That'd been like 10, 15 hours travel anytime, anyways. So what I did is I knew I kind of needed to buy a car soon, but what I ended up doing is for this trip specifically, I bought a Range Rover and I might as well just get a Range Rover now. So I was like, I need to buy a car. So funny enough, because I couldn't set boundaries, I made the choice I'm gonna, maybe I would eventually got it, but like I thought about it. I was like, I literally bought a car because I had to go on, I want, had to go on this trip because I couldn't say no. So I bought a car, bought a Range Rover, and then I drove 10 hours to Colorado. And this is at a time when I was extremely busy. I had a lot of stuff going on. To drive 10 hours is a big deal. I drove 10 hours all the way to Colorado because that was easier than flying. It was about the same amount of time. Then I am there in Colorado and I was almost falling asleep along the way because it was such a long drive. I get there, we have fun and everything. However, after two or three days, it's time to go back. As, and by the way, there were 15 people plus that were invited and only like four or five people showed up. Not because we didn't love our friend, but because a lot of those other people probably didn't have trouble setting boundaries. There were also entrepreneurs that didn't have a problem saying no. It was, a, it was an inconvenient time to go. So what happens is it then snows and it is snowing like crazy. And what happens is it's time to go check out of the Airbnb. So I am driving back home to Sedona this time, going to the Sedona place, house. And as I'm driving, signs are saying snow tires. You must have snow tires to drive. I'm going on these cliffs with snow everywhere. And every time I put my foot on the brake, the car slides and it's sliding around cliffs. Literally, I'm like wondering, am I gonna make it home alive? And instead of it being 10 hours on the way home, it took like 15 hours because I had to drive extremely slow around these cliffs because it kept saying, you know, snow tires. And I'm like, well, I don't have snow tires. I don't even know where, how to get snow tires. And I'm driving very unsafely, skidding, almost wondering every turn, am I gonna live? And I finally make it home. I obviously lived. However, in that moment, I realized on the way home, 15 hours, I'm like, Literally, this is a result of me not being able to say no because I didn't want my friend to feel tension of me not able to go to her birthday party. That was a big wake up call for me. And this stems from number one, what we're talking about is in your body, feeling inside of your body. This is one of the biggest keys to transformation for the empath. Now what has happened is I explained a little bit ago, I have an Instagram video I posted four days ago that has over 2 million views that really resonate with people, over 100,000 shares. And I think this really resonates with people and it's a simple idea that when we're kids, what we do is if we don't feel safe, we expand our field to include that of mom and dad. And then we're constantly tuning to mom and dad and say, how do I need to change to be different so that mom and dad approve of me so that I can feel safe? There's a belief that there must be something wrong with me. And what happens is imagine the bottom three chakras of the root, solar plexus, and sacral chakra. If we're not grounded in our body, that moves up to our third eye so that we can intuitively pick off on everyone around us. So my most empaths are very intuitive. A lot of them are healers. Some of them are psychic. Some of them are people that just feel like they can read a room. It's an intuitive center that's been activated. But what's been lacking is a sense of groundedness. So what ends up happening is there's a constant tuning to everyone else. Now realize this. Like imagine if your energy is going outwards, it's being projected out and it's dispersing the center of gravity. When you bring the energy back in, you allow it to activate. You have a center of gravity to where people conform more to you and who you are authentically being. Now, when you go out into the world, the energy you embody is what people respond to. If you imagine like an improv show where an actor is acting a specific way and everyone else in the cast is just responding to the way this one person is acting, that's kind of what happens in reality. People are responding to you based on the energy you are putting out. So if you go out playing a sensitive empath, that's always feeling everyone's energy and then people realize that you're willing to like sacrifice yourself for them, there's people that are gonna capitalize on it, that are gonna get used to you abandoning yourself for them. And then you're gonna think, I need to keep doing this. So realize, first off, people respond to you based on the energy you are embodying. When you start embodying being in your own frame of reality, being in your own body, there are some people that aren't gonna like that or they're not gonna know how to relate to the new you, but you have to hold your frame. So being in your body, bringing your energy into your body is the first step to this whole entire process. When I started doing this, I was living in Sedona at the time. This is shortly after that experience. And I learned it from my shadow work integration coach, someone that has a double PhD and was a uh, would teach Carl Jungian psychology. But this Zazen principle, 
It's so what I call the frame technique. Now the frame technique I have taught in YouTube videos at live events, literally tens of thousands of people have done the frame technique and I hear all the time from people I get DMs that say this technique changed their life. When I meet people in public that recognize me for my videos, very often it's the frame technique changed everything for me. I made an Instagram post recently that said, what is the most powerful thing that you've learned? Not even, even just my videos, but just in general. Just because I was looking for the most powerful teachings people learn because I'm looking for video ideas. And literally, the frame technique, the frame technique, the frame technique. The frame technique is you feel the separation between you and a candle flame. I'm gonna link that video at the end. But it, be, feeling the separation allows you to individuate from the energy field of other people. It allows you to feel safe within your own body and it completely it completely changes the way that you relate to your environment so the second step to you being in your own frame has to do with taking responsibility for your own stuff your own maybe center of gravity that is like that is like tuning to other people, but also being able to identify what's not your stuff. In the sense that if somebody else is disappointed that you set boundaries with them, that's their stuff, not yours. So with that being said, there's a process here that I want to share that's called Ho'oponopono. I should, we do it at our live events. It's, it's some, once again, I hear a lot of people say it completely transforms their life. It's this very simple concept where you say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And the story is that Dr. Hugh Len, who was that of the doctor that modernized this technique, it's an ancient Hawaiian technique that's been around for a long time where families would use it in Hawaii in order to get along with each other and there'd be like a facilitator that's helping them like release the tension between families but what they found and what Dr. Hugh Len did is he used it in a more metaphysical way that completely revolutionized the way people relate to it and that is that what happens what happened is he went to a mental hospital in that of Hawaii and what he did is he went in and at the time there were a lot of people in there that were patients that were crazy that were attacking people that were uh, like it wasn't safe, like the co the people that worked there, really high turnover rate. People were afraid as they were walking around working there. Dr. Hugh Len goes into there. Within literally six months, the whole entire vibe shifts. Within two or three years, many of the people that were deemed criminally insane were either transferred to other facilities, weren't on watch nearly as much. Some of them even went home. The lighter cases even went home because they were considered normal. And the, there wasn't a high turnover rate. Everything changed. And here's the crazy thing. Dr. Hugh Len, who was using the power of hope he never actually talked and coached and did therapy with the patients. He never actually was like, this is your childhood trauma, this is what you do, he didn't do any of that. All he would do is he would walk around and he would carry that energy and he would do it, it on himself and then that changed the whole entire vibe. Now, how can this be possible? Well, what he claimed is that all reality is, is data, it's information. And when he took ownership of what was happening on the outside and what someone else did, and he cleaned his perception of them within himself, then what happened is that person would then begin to heal. So what he says is that there's 15 million bits, 11 to 15 million bits of information around us at any given moment. We perceive of 40 bits per second. What if what we perceive in other people is we get the version of people that reflect back what's in our own energetic field. The idea behind Ho'oponopono is that it's all within us. It's all a reflection. So as he heals within himself, the people on the outside are healing. And that's why I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you, so po powerful. I'm sorry, I take responsibility. If I'm perceiving it in you, it's inside of me. And then he would clear up his image of them. This also reminds me of what Jesus talked about, or didn't talk about, but people would say that about, he would have an energy field that was so strong and he would see people as healed. He wouldn't see them as sick. And then in his presence, they would heal. Could be a similar thing. Where it's like your energy, you take responsibility for it. So I'm sorry, I take responsibility for it. If I can perceive of it in you, it's in me. It's really your conversation with the divine. I'm sorry is like, I take responsibility for it. Not in a guilty, like I'm so sorry. Like if you're at a grocery store and someone bumps into you or you bump into them, you, what do you say? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's not like, I'm sorry, so sorry, sorry. I was unconscious. So I'm sorry, please forgive me. Forgiveness is the key to all elevating of vibration. Thank you, gratitude, high frequency. Thank you for the divine taking this pattern away from me. I love you, which is who you naturally are. I have a whole video that explains this much more in detail. I'm kind of like jumping over some of it, but just to kind of explain the power of it. But you take responsibility for what's yours and your perception of other people that are taking your energy. And as you do, you begin to let go of that. And then you can also see what other people's of stuff is. And what I mean by that is like, if you set boundaries to someone else and they don't like it, it's not your responsibility to fix them, make them feel better. It's, it's your responsibility to take more of the energy within your own body and to also forgive mom or dad from the past that may have had that energy to where you then didn't feel safe or you felt like they were emotionally or physically unavailable. Because really what an empath has, by the way, is like an, is an abandonment wound. 
It's an abandonment wound that says that like people leave me. I don't want to be rejected because rejection path is like death, cut off from source. But the lesson for an empath is to bring the source back to your own body. Feel inside of your own body. Instead of feeling everyone else's energy, feel inside of yourself. A lot of times empaths have very big trouble talking about what they feel about themselves. They know what everyone else is feeling and they know how they feel when someone else doesn't like what they do, but how do you feel inside of your own body about yourself? It'd be a very hard question for empaths to answer. Now, Ho'oponopono is an extremely powerful process. Now, the frame technique, feeling the separation, this is the third one, the frame technique, allows you to feel safe inside of your own body and to identify what's yours, what's not yours. Now, this is the process with a lot of empaths, is they didn't properly individuate from mom and dad. They weren't encouraged to think for themselves. They weren't encouraged to cause tension. They were shamed for it. And therefore, the key was, what does mom and dad think about me? What does mom and dad think about me? I was watching this movie with Jonah Hill and someone else is called Eddie, is it Eddie Murphy it's called people or something it's this whole video about how this couple who was like a mixed-race couple white guy african-american together Eddie Murphy's the dad it's like they're, they're trying to make their parents happy and the whole entire movie and they like each other and they're gonna get married and then it all falls apart because they're just trying so hard to make each other's parents happy and to get their approval and at the end it just blows up and at the end they then finally express how they really feel and he stands up like Jonah Hill stands up, his character stands up to Eddie Murphy. And then on the other side of that, the actress stands up to this other person's mom. And as they do, they're being vulnerable. And as they're in their own frame, all of a sudden, things start to change versus them letting everyone else plan the wedding and all this crazy stuff. And it becomes all this drama, which is of course what makes the movie funny. But it's interesting now when people get into their own frame and they start expressing the true selves, there's a lot of respect there. I remember back in 2018, 19, when I was going through this and I started expressing how I really felt, expressing some of the messed up things that happened in the past between me and certain people. And I thought that if I said this, I'd be rejected and in fact, I said it and then there was this huge breakthrough. There was this respect that was there that wasn't really there before. It changes so much. But in order to do so, the individuation, feeling the separation between you and a candle flame, feeling the separation between you and someone else, and then asking yourself, tuning to your body, how do I think, how do I feel about this, is extraordinarily powerful. Because then you start coming at it from this, this energy of, of that power from the inside out. Now the fourth thing, that changes, and there's a, a video I have on the, sh the frame technique if you want to check it out too. You go much deeper into this whole concept. Now also, we're gonna be doing a 21 day confidence love challenge. So if you want to release codependent patterns to become emotionally available, if you want to be able to feel safe inside of your own body, learn how to have confident energy from the inside out so that you can attract love or new opportunities into your life or deepen the love of the relationship you're already in, then join the 21 Day Confidence Love Challenge. We're doing it starting October 13th for 21 days. I'll go ahead and click, you can click the link below to join, grab your spot. They're always so powerful. It's 21 days of total transformation. I haven't done one in a while, so I'm excited for this. And uh, you could join there. Now the fourth thing you must do as an empath at the heel is you must learn how to say yes to everything. You need to be able to say yes to everything. If a friend wants you to go to a party, you don't want to do it, you have to say yes. That's the key. You must say yes. You ever seen the movie Yes Man? Just say yes to everything. You'll not know who you are. You'll feel like your energy is scattering everywhere. You'll constantly be a leaf in the wind being pulled in so many different directions. So if you've been saying no or you want to learn how to say no, just don't. Say yes to everything because then you'll have no idea where your center of gravity is. Now, of course, as I say this right now, I'm being completely sarcastic. The thing empaths need to learn how to say is no, no, no. You're hearing me say that and you're like, yes, Aaron. And you're like, no, I'm not. That's not a good thing for me to do. I have a thing where I've been saying yes for a very long time. And instead you wanna say no. Now you don't have to say no like, no. It's like somebody wants to do something like, hey, do you wanna go to the park today? You're like, no. It's 20 years of built up wanting to say no. No, I won't go to the park with you. Doesn't have to be that dramatic. But in general, you tuned it inside of your body and you say, do I want to do this? That's it, you just ask the question. Do I wanna do this? You ask yourself, do you wanna do it? I was also in Sedona when I learned how to say no more often. Someone that was like community, leader person that also like curates content and stuff like that that you know I was friends with in um, Sedona I was like come to a party it's a dinner party we're gonna have burgers and I was like yeah I tuned in my body do I want to go into this I did a meditation I was like do I want to go I'm just kidding I just asked myself do I want to go I realized no I did not want to go I did not have energy to go around being a whole bunch of people sometimes especially as an empath you're sensitive you might just like being in your own energy I love being in my own energy. I, I didn't want to go, so I said no. And then this person kind of tested it. They said, I don't have to lie. I don't want to lie. I, I value my own sense of integrity. I value being honest. And I said, and I said, and then I was like, 
Okay, the old version of me be like, no, I have to go to the airport to pick up a friend. Uh, I have this other thing to do. I have to come up with an excuse that is not in integrity because it's a lie. And then you want to know what I said? I just said, no, thank you again. And I was like, I could give an answer. No, thank you. I don't feel like going out. It would have been truth. I just didn't feel like it. But I didn't have to go, no, I gotta pick someone up in the airport. I gotta drive to Phoenix to pick someone up. I don't have to lie. I don't wanna lie. I, I value my own sense of integrity. I value being honest. And I said, no, thank you. Not this time. And she said, okay. It wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't like they all got to a group and said, let's, Aaron's not cool because he didn't come. You can say no. And it becomes liberating. Also, the more successful you come, the more you have to say no. When I started on YouTube making videos while I was working my nine to five job, friends would be like, come hang out. Come smoke a little cannabis. Come drink a little. And guess what? I had to say no because I was like, I have a vision of what I want to go and how I want, what I want to create in my life. That vision was important to me. And then you had to say no. And especially now, as my YouTube channel has grown, as things have grown, people want to do things. And I get told anytime, like I was at Air, I was at a place called Airwan and I met this guy. And he wanted to introduce me. He, he, he like recognized me for my video. Videos, and then he talked to me and was telling me all about all the stuff he was doing in the world. I was like, cool. And he's like, yeah, I got to introduce you to this person, this yoga student. I want to introduce you over here. I want to introduce you over here. I want to introduce you over here. Great intentions, but no awareness that I'm extremely busy and I get a lot of people that offer me a lot of things because of what I do. I have to say no. As much as I can see this guy really wants to introduce me to yoga leader Megan or something, I'm like, no. I literally had to say no. And sometimes I have to say that to people that are subscribed to me and it kind of sucks when they're like, can you, you want to hang out? Let's go do, what's your phone number? I've had people ask me for my phone number before to hang out. And I'm like, like, I, no, I can't do that because I have to get back to my friends and my family. And sometimes I don't even get back to them because I'm busy. So adding other people into my repertoire is too much. I've had to learn to say no. So no, it's, it's okay to say no. It's liberating to say no. Now, the fifth thing, and one of the most powerful ones is learning the power of vulnerability. Vulnerability is the key to curing shame. Vulnerability is the key to expressing how you really feel. The fear is if I express how I really feel, I'm gonna be rejected and cut off from source. In fact, it's the opposite. Sometimes people may not resonate with you, but remember, that's a good thing. You wanna polarize. Tension is not bad. There's a message for all empaths, is that tension does not equal bad. As a kid, tension did equal bad. Mom and dad's not happy. <gasps> Something wrong with me? How do you want me to be? Nothing, it's not bad. Tension is good. Tension is what creates growth. Tension is what allows you to, to express the real you. Be vulnerable. It takes attention. If you're gonna go ask someone that you're attracted to out, it takes vulnerability to do that. Hey, I saw you from over there. You wanna go out? Now, it opens it up to where this person could say no. But guess what, if the person says no, it's okay. It does not mean death. Even though rejection to an empath feels like death. But when you start realizing, oh, you do it and you're like, I'm okay. It takes courage to have vulnerability. Or to your friend, hey, you remember when you asked me to do this and I did it and I didn't really like it. From now on, this is how I wanna be. And they're like, if they're like, screw you, you're not blah, 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 then guess what? They're not a real friend. You being the real you is you putting your energy out there in a very powerful way and it changes everything everything changes when you start being a new version of you shame is what a lot of times the empath has locked in shame I'm broken there's something wrong with me and vulnerability is shining light on that to where I was like I'm gonna express the real me not because of what it gets me because it's who I choose to be and the key to this and the most powerful thing I could share with you is make a firm decision to become more aware of when you Lose your frame to other people. Make a firm decision to notice the pattern within yourself of if you are manipulating subconsciously other people by giving. See, the, the difference between an empath and a narcissist is that an empath gives and is nice to then get approval and validation. The narcissist takes and demands. They're both stemming from an abandonment wound and normally they attract each other because they have the same core wound. Now, here's the hard thing for empaths to hear and why I waited to the end of this video to share this. As evil and bad <laughs> as the narcissist is, and manipulative as the narcissist is, there's a level of manipulation that stems from the empath. And the first step towards healing is becoming aware of that. Are you changing yourself to make other people happy? Are you changing and being nice to other people to get something from them, whether it's their validation or support? And the key is to bring the energy back inside of your body, to feel the separation between you and other people, to be aware of how you can Nurture your own inner child and you can feel safe within yourself by putting the awareness inside of yourself to be vulnerable and express the real you to not be attached to what other people think or feel to tune to your own body before you make decisions. These are all things that will change your energy at the core fundamental level and changes 
the way that you show up. So these things change your life in so many ways as an empath. Remember that bring the energy back to yourself, bring the energy back to source, and understand that there are things you can do, like the frame technique that will completely change your life. Do it for 21 days, watch how much your life changes, read the comments to see what's possible. I'll go ahead and link it right here.